Hello, this is Robert Waltz again, here to talk to you about the traditional ballot index. This is the second part of this discussion. I'm going to be spending th this section talking about the information in the index, the information you can find there, and how it's organized. So I'm going to do most of this by looking at a particular song, one which you all surely know, The Golden Vanity, uh, child number 286. I'm going to use this because it has because there are so many versions that it is a good example of all the sorts of material that's in the index. So the first thing to notice is obviously the title of the song, which we give here twice. I'm going to be doing most of this using the ballot index software, but all that I talk about can be used with other versions of the index. We start with the title, and that is the title and that we use. In the ballot index, we use the titles of the songs as the key reference number child or laws or route used numbers or letters, but we actually use the title. There are, of course, many, many versions of the Golden Vanity known by many, many different titles. So we actually have 27 different titles for the Golden Vanity, but the official one, the one that we use as the title, is the Golden Vanity. So that's the title. And we try never to change that. Once in a while it has to happen. If you have a, the roving boy, something like that, there might be a second roving boy and a third roving boy and a fourth roving boy. So we have to add numbers sometimes. But other than that, we try not to change the titles. That's the permanent marker. There's the description. The description here is up to 255 letters. This is to let you identify the song. For some songs, we have a long description. A long description can be of infinite length. We don't do that very often because we're not really trying to give you a complete plot summary. We're just trying to give you enough to be sure that you found the right song. If there's any doubt about that, we're more likely to put the information in the notes than we are to put it in the description. Then there's the author. Most of these songs in the index are of unknown authors, but we will put the composer, the writer, whoever it is, if we know it, and we may put a little bit of commentary there on how certain we are. We might put a question mark by it, something like that. The earliest date. This can be really complicated. At first we were just putting in the, the date of the earliest performance we'd found. Later, and so there are still some that will just say 1827 or something like that. But we, been, as no songs go in, as more information comes in, we're trying to say how we know that date, and these can really get complicated. We might get something from an old manuscript that can't be dated, so we might say, well, here's the date of the manuscript, and here's the date it was first printed, so we know that for certain it was printed then. And we might date the first traditional collection, something like that. So this is the earliest date, gives you summary information about how old the piece is, and usually the piece will be older than that earliest date, but we try to be make sh absolutely sure that the earliest date is safe. That is, you can say if it's dated to that date, you know it's out of copyright, things like that. Keywords, talked about that. There are a couple of hundred keywords to help you find songs. So the Golden Vanity is, of course, about the sea. It's about a fight between two ships. It, it's about the, cab the people on the enemy ship being killed and maybe the cabin boy promise. The ship's captain made a promise to the boy, and it was a lie, and the boy is abandoned. So these are, these are things you could look up sea songs involving abandonment. So we could do keywords sea and abandonment, and we see several songs, including the Golden Vanity. Found in, this is, a, this is just a summary for instance, it says it's found in all parts of the United States. That doesn't mean it's been found in every state of the United States, but it's been found in New England, it's been found in the Mid-Atlantic states, it's been found in the Southeast, the South, the Midwest, the Far West, the Rockies. In Britain, it's been found in all parts of Scotland, or in all parts of England, several parts of Scotland. It's been found in a lot of Canada. Mostly we break up countries, we, well, Australia we treat as a whole country, New Zealand we treat as a whole country, uh, Ireland, well, that was a hard choice because do we, do we separate out Northern Ireland? 
we separate out Northern Ireland, then we're splitting up Ulster, which should maybe be treated as a whole thing. So I kind of gave up and said, Ireland is Ireland. That's not a political statement. It's just, I don't want to figure out what part of Ireland is part of Ireland. <laughs> uh, historical references, there aren't really many for the Golden Vanity, but we did put in one for the life of Sir Walter Raleigh. Then we get to the references. And as you can see, there are a lot of them. We have so far a hundred different citations of the Golden Vanity. That is a hundred different books, and that's just books, have versions of the Golden Vanity. We start with Child, because he's the, the person who gave it the number, 286. We have Bronson's Listing. Then we start going through all these other books, and we do abbreviate these somewhat. Child is Francis James Child, the English and Scottish popular ballads. Bronson is the traditional tunes of the Child ballads. These are not precisely grouped. They're not in alphabetical order. I do tend to try to keep sources from the same part of the world together, but that's not guaranteed. Some of them we cite, child we cite by the child number. Others we cite by the page. It's mostly to try to make it easiest to figure out what's going on. We do abbreviate the names of the books to try to keep the size down. Remember that this was supposed to be a small thing once upon a time. So, so books are usually assigned an abbreviation and there's a bibliography that shows you the names of the songs and will give you some information about that particular book. So in this case we have a hundred different books with versions of it. And note that we're not listing individual instances, we're just summarizing it. For Child, Child had three texts and two tunes of the Golden Vanity. We're not describing the individual versions, we're just giving you the overview. For Bronson there are 111, so obviously we're not going to give you details on all of them. For the Child Ballads, we do go down here as best we can when something is in Bronson, where there's a tune in Bronson, we do try to give you a backward reference. For example, uh, the versions of the Golden Vanity in Randolph's Ozark folk songs, we tell you that the A version in Randolph is Bronson's number 69, Randolph's D is Bronson's number 48, and Randolph's E is number 51. So this is a way that you can actually go. It's easy to go from Bronson to Randolph, it's not easy to go from Randolph to Bronson, so this is a shortcut to help you going in that other direction. So that's those are the book references. Then we have additional references. These are things that don't belong in a particular book, in a well-known book, uh, or in a in something that it has so many citations that we decided to index that whole book. For example, down here in these additional references. Walter de la Mare, that's obviously not a folk song collection, but we decided to index this particular version of The Golden Vanity because a lot of people will have Walter de la Mare's Come Hither and may have learned The Golden Vanity from Walter de la Mare, so we cite it there. Uh, up here we have DT, that's the digital tradition, so that's a place where you can find texts and tunes on Mudcat. So it's a so that's a reference to tell you how to find these things. The ST that's a supplemental tradition that tells you that we have our own text in there, uh, which you can look up. There's the Roud number, and it tells you how many entries there are in the Roud index. 564 for the Golden Vanity. Then we get into recordings. These are mostly field recordings or recordings of people like the Carter family, people that we consider folk performers, or I mean traditional folk performers, I do not mean modern folk performers. There are very few exceptions that are modern folk, like the Almanac Singers or Pete Seeger, because they may have helped encourage, the, helped spread the song, but mostly we're looking at people who are traditional performers. We have a few broadsides from common collections, then we have cross-references, in this case the Louisiana Lowlands is a song that has some of the same words. Alternate titles. A lot of alternate titles are listed up here in the references. These are titles that haven't yet gotten a reference, but these are but will, are things that will show up in the song list. So there are, oh, that's not the song list. 
That's the song list. <laughs> but the, these alternate titles would be things for which you would have a reference in the song list. Same tune, the, uh, that's a list of songs that use the same tune as this song. That's pretty vague for the Golden Vanity. But let's try, let's try Rosin the Bow, for instance. Let's try to learn how to type. There, so Rosin the Bow. If we look at that, if you down, go down there and look at same tune entries for that, there are many, many, many of them. Some of them are in the index. Acres of Clams or Lincoln Liberty are in the index, but a lot of them aren't. For example, there are a lot of political campaign songs to the tune of Ros and the Bow, starting with the, the William Henry Harrison campaign. And we don't want to index every song from the William Henry Harrison campaign, Songster, because nobody sings them now. Nobody cares now. But we're mentioning it. So you can find Old Tippecanoe number three, which begins, Ye Vanets of Wide Pennsylvania, and is found in Songs of the People and Log Cabin Days of Old Tippecanoe. You can get a mention of that. And that's the only mention we'll have in the index of that particular song. But you know that it's to the tune of Rosin the Bow. And here are all these others to the tune of Rosin the Bow. So let's go back to the Golden Vanity. And it has the one same tune. Others will have more. Then we get into the notes. This one doesn't have much in the way of notes because, well, there's a lot of scholarship about the Golden Vanity. But there is some, some historical information, some background about when it was published. There's a bibliography. And this is the list of books that are cited in the notes. Now, when they're only citing one or two things in the notes, we generally won't have a bibliography. But for something that has a very long, important thing, a, a long, very important set of notes, we will have a bibliography. So let's take, say, Judas. That has some fairly extensive notes discussing the, its status as the earliest English ballad. So it will have a fairly significant bibliography here. A number of books. Some of these some of these are about Judas itself. Some of them are about the background to Judas, the Judas legend underlying this song. So that, that's the bibliography applies to the notes. Then we say last updated in. That's the time when it was, that's the edition of the ballad index in which it was released. So there has been an update. You're actually seeing something here that hasn't been released yet because as I speak, the current version of the ballad index is 5.1. This is one that I have updated since 5.1 was released. Uh, I added, I think, one book and one reference because I found out a little bit more about the manuscript that contains Judas. I found another instance of someone discussing the readings of Judas that Child actually printed probably wrong because he didn't have access to the manuscript. So this one is one that is quite newly updated it will be updated in version 5.2. At the end there's the file number and that's not something you really care much about. It's just something that we use. That's the internal marker to keep track of this song. So all ver well there aren't any other versions of Judas but if we went back to the Golden Vanity the file number on the Golden Vanity is child is C286, child 286. So that shows, that's how we keep all these versions of the Golden Vanity together. That's how we know, if we look at this one, the Golden Vanity with two E's instead of a Y, that file number is the way that we could get back to the big entry for the Golden Vanity. You might, say, you might argue that that is our child number or our laws number but it's really only for internal use. Again, 
the title is the big thing that we want you to be keeping track of because that's easy to remember. Are you going to remember all these numbers and letters and titles? No. We'd like you to be able to remember something that's relatively easy to remember. So anything in here can be used as a way to find the song. It's generally easiest to find by the title or the keywords or the description, but we've set everything up and you can find by the route number. You can find by anything, but that's the basic index. So that's what you can find in here. That's the information we have in here. Remember that a big part of the purpose of the ballot index is to give you access to scholarship and most of that will be found in the notes but you can also find the summary the author information the earliest date information the historical references information and the summary of where it's found in the found in as well as of course all the books we know that have cited it all the recordings we know about all the broadsides we know about so that's the information in the index my next part I will try to talk to you about a the various formats in which the ballot index is available and how you can get access to it yourself. Thanks for listening.